what I'm going to start with is just some terminology. Now, guys, I wouldn't waste time writing this down. Take a screenshot of it. That's another thing you need to be able to do is take screenshots on your device or whatever you're using. And just because, especially for something like this, I'm not expecting you to learn that off by heart, but it is important that you know these things so that when I use these words, you know what I'm talking about. Okay, so just some terminology to start with. In geometry, one of the important things that we need to understand is that we are working generally with points and line segments. Those line segments can sometimes be joined to form a shape. So like when we start with triangles, we have line segments forming that shape. All right, so um, a point is, sorry guys, cats. Get rid of him very quickly. A point is basically a dot. And we label that dot with a capital letter. Now we use those capital letters and it's important to know what the label is because it helps us eventually uh, label line segments, label angles. So anytime you see a point, it should be labeled with a capital letter and then we're able to do a bunch of different things. Now two points can be joined together to form a line segment. So over here, the points A and B are joined together to form line segment A, B. So those points help us label line segments. They can also help us label angles, right? So angles are created between two line segments and those line segments that create an angle we call arms. Two arms need, are needed rather to form an angle and these arms meet at a common vertex. So this point down here in this diagram A and I've just scribbled all over it, of course. That point A is the common vertex from where the arms AB and AC sort of come out and where they meet. The distance between those two arms or the space between those two arms is then our angle. Now angles can be measured in different units, but we are going to start with, oh, we're gonna start with angles being measured in degrees. The reason I'm pointing this out is because when we now go and state the size of an angle, we need to remember to put that little degree sign. So for example, if this angle was like 70 degrees, we need to remember to put the degree sign, which is like a little open dot at the top. Alrighty. So an angle is between two line segments, which we call arms, and it's basically the space between those two arms. Now there's lots of different ways we can label an angle, and I'm going to go through them mostly because when your diagrams start to get a little bit more complicated, it's really important to be able to label the specific angle you are working with. Because if we've got lots of angles, sometimes it can get a bit confusing and we need to be able to specify the exact angle that we're talking about. So there's four ways essentially we can label angles. Now we'll generally use the second and the third ways, but we're going to go through all of them anyways. The first way we can label an angle is just with a capital letter. This will be mostly in like triangles and stuff where there's no other angles at that point. And so we can use the capital letter. Now, sometimes we can use the angle, which is like a lopsided L and then the capital letter. But most of the time we use the little hat on top of the, the letter that um, we are working with. So that little hat, that little triangle on top of the letter is talking about an angle. So we are referring specifically here to angle A. Okay, so that's one way we can do it. Sometimes we use that, but more often than not, we actually use way two, which is using three letters. Okay, now the order in which these letters go doesn't matter. What is important is that the letter in the middle represents where the angle is. Okay, so here in our diagram, we can see that we've got an angle at vertex A. So we can see that the hat is on top of the letter A. And we can see that that angle is created between two arms, AB and AC. So if I follow this line, I go from B to the vertex A up to C. And so this is where I get my order of B, A, C from. I go from point A to the vertex, oh, sorry, from point B to the vertex A to the vertex C, creating my angle. Like I say, that order isn't important. If you had written this as angle C, A, B, that's absolutely fine because the hat is still on top of the correct letter and that is always the middle letter. Okay, so just make sure your hat is on the right one. The order then isn't overly important. Righty. 
sometimes we're nice and we can give you numbers we can number the angles so here you can see that at point or vertex a we actually have two angles i've got this acute angle and i have this obtuse angle so often what's going to happen is that from one point you have multiple angles and so we need to be able to label them now in this case in this diagram i've given you numbers so that makes it a little bit easier to work with if we give you numbers you can just label it angle a1 a2 or whatever the case is so here that is angle a1 and angle a2 is the angle with the two in it but we can also use our three letters as we know so if we go back to angle a1 if I go and have a look at the arms and the points I created, I've got B, A, C, so I can label that angle B, A, C. Remember, the little hat must go on top of the letter where the angle sits. So it sits at A, so the hat must go on A. Right, and then finally, we can use variables to label our angles. Um, this will be if I've given you the variable on the diagram, you can't just add it yourself because we need to know what you're talking about. But basically, if there is an X or a Y there, you can just say angle X or angle Y. This will be mostly what's going to happen in our examples here. But just bear in mind that there are um, different ways to label different angles. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to, um, yeah. Right, I'm going to do that. So you can screenshot all of that, like terminology and stuff like that. So screenshot that bit if you need. And then we're going to jump straight into some examples for ourselves. Yep, let's do this, my pebs. The screen is short. It's your time to shine. <laughs> let's shine, guys. <laughs> Melo, remember, if you have a question, you can definitely put it on the chat. Okay, but we can take the check. Mm. Don't it's gone. Yeah. Okay, right. So let us jump straight into it. So there are different reasons in geometry that we need to learn. And basically a reason is like the thinking behind why I can find the size of an angle the way I do. So that's hmm, one of our first reasons that we're gonna use for straight lines is the reason angles around a point. Now, basically what this means is that if you've got one central point, if you add all of the angles around that central point, you will get 360 degrees. The reason being is because if we go or if we work around a central point, so basically form a circle, we are creating, as I've said, a circle and a circle contains 360 degrees. So what I mean by that is if we've got our central point here and we've got a whole bunch of like different angles that we want to, oh, sure, the alphabet has now escaped me. A, B. C, D. If I now add all four of those angles up, because they all form a circle, they all need to add up to 360 degrees. So the second I have the central point with angles around it, if I add all of the angles around it, I should get 360 degrees. Now, what is very, very important in geometry is that the second you make a statement, and you'll see what I mean in a second, you have to give a reason. It's non-negotiable. You can't choose to give a reason or not. You have to give a reason. You can get marks allocated for your reasons. So it's really important that we remember our reasons. You don't want to lose a mark because you've forgotten your reason. So the reason we would use here if we're going to work with angles around a point is exactly that reason, angles around a point. So this thing that I've got in um, the block here, logical, that is my reason for this specific sort of scenario. If I'm going to ask, or if I'm going to work with angles around a point or angles in a circle, my reason has to be angles around a point. And you'll see how we set this up in a second. Okay, so let's have a look at some examples. So we're going to start off quite easy to start off with, and we'll get to the more complex ones. So here I've got an angle X and a reflex angle of 310. Now guys, reflex angles, our angles bigger than 180 degrees. Alrighty. So if I have a look here, I can see very clearly that I have got a central point, which is this point over here. And if I go all the way around, I get 360 degrees. So I'm working with angles around a central point. So I can 
now start to set up an expression. Now I can already see answers coming through. If you guys are happy to jump straight to your answer with your reason, that is absolutely fine, especially for the slightly easier questions. I am going to set it up though so that we can see what's happening just so that everyone's clear. So what I know is that x plus 310 degrees must give me 360 degrees. I've made a statement. I've said that if I add those angles together, I must get 360. So because I've made the statement, I need to give a reason for why I'm saying that. Our reason always gets put into brackets. And my reason is angles round a point. Now, luckily in maths, we can abbreviate and we can use symbols. So angles, you can use that like lopsided L and point you can abbreviate to PT. That's absolutely fine. You don't have to write it out. It just saves us having very long reasons um, as we start to do our work. We don't wanna waste time writing paragraphs. Okay, so now what I want to do is I want to solve for X because that's the goal, I wanna get X. So I know I have to subtract 310 on both sides. So X is equal to 360 minus 310. And so I get that X, as many of you have said, is equal to 50 degrees. Now remember your degree sign, that's really important in your answer. That is the unit in which we measure angles. So you need to have the little degree there. Right, well done. I saw a lot of 50s come in on the group, on the chat. Right, well done. And don't forget your reason. Okay. So let's have a look at a second example here. You now, guys take screenshots, sorry. Uh, yeah, Just sorry, take yeah, yeah. Screenshot. Screenshot everyone, time to shine. <laughs> you guys are doing well, by the way. Let's go, let's move. All righty, so let's, oh golly, I'm just scrolling. Right, let's have a look at the second one. So now we've got a few more angles that we're working with. Again, we see that I've got the central point, which is my purple dot over there. And so if I add all four of those angles up, I actually end up creating a circle. So I'm working with a full revolution of 360 degrees. So my first question is, you can put it in the chat or you can raise your hand. What does the square thing represent? What is that telling me? Because it's giving me information, but what information is it giving me? Elisa, do you want to tell us? Hello, ma'am. Hi. Oh, it's not. It's ninety degrees, ma'am. Awesome. Well done. Okay, guys. So exactly, this little square. Whenever you see it, it's telling you that the angle is 90 degrees. It's a right angle. It's giving you the size of the angle. So that's quite important because now if I want to set up an equation for myself, I now have four. No, I don't. I have three of my four angles. Okay, so I can set up my equation in that I know that x plus the 90 plus 60 plus 70 is equal to 360 degrees. Now guys, again, I'm really just like expanding and writing all the steps because we've just started. I wanna make sure that everyone's on the same page. If you're happy to go straight to the answer, that is also fine, just remember your reason. So my reason here we know is angles around a point. Um, and you have to have that reason. And now we can solve. Now, if I simplify this, so basically, if I add those all together, 90 plus 60 plus 70, they're all like terms. So that's why I can add them together, is 220. So I've got x plus 220 is equal to 360. Now I solve for x, so I subtract 220 on both sides. And so I get that x is equal to 140 degrees. And guys, we can go and check ourselves. If I go and put that 140 back in place of X and I say 140 plus 70 plus 60 plus 90, I should get that 360 degrees. And so when you add them up and you see that you do get 360 degrees, you know you've done it correctly. Alrighty, so take a screenshot if you need, but essentially it doesn't matter how many angles, as long as they're around a central point, we can add them together and say it must be equal to 360 because all of them together create a circle 
which means that I'm working with 360 degrees because that is how many degrees I have in one circle in, or in one full revolution. Okay, so take your screenshots if you need. And let's have a look at, whoops, at question three. So I would like you to try this by yourselves with me. You can raise a hand if you'd like to give an answer. You can put your answers in the chat, completely up to you. I want to know what the size of angle X here is. Okay, you guys have got this. You're doing so well. And I know geometry can be scary, but I promise you, you've got this. So just keep working hard, keep practicing, keep asking those questions. And like I say, if you're feeling brave, put your hand up, let's hear from you, or you can pop it in the chat. I'd really like to hear some voices though. So I'd love a hand or two if you're feeling up to it. I see some hands. I got them to mail or are you guys yet to answer? Oh, Alizua is also ready. Hey, I think Ayanda was first. Can I answer? Awesome, I'm ready. Ayanda, we are all yours. Hi, ma'am. Hi. So, ma'am, the expression, no, the equation will be x plus 110 plus 140 equals to 360 degrees. And what is your reason for that, Ayanda? My reason is that they, you, they add up to 360 because it's not angles on a straight line. Good. Okay. So because they add up to 360, I'm using the reason angles, oh, golly, this morning, angles round a point. Oh, okay. Okay, good. But it's exactly as you said, they have to add up to 360. Right, well done. So what's your next step? My next step is that I say x is equals to 360 minus 250. And where did you get 250 from? I had I added 110 plus and 140. Perfect. Okay. And so and x is equal to? x will give me 110. Awesome. Well, well done. Well done, Ayanda. Thank you. Okay, guys. Thank you. So, because all of those angles are around one central point, if I add them all up, oh, that's a terrible circle. If I add them all up, I have to get 360 degrees. So, this is sort of that statement and the reason that I'm making there. If I add them together, I must get 360. Um, as I understood, she, um, when we say 110 plus 140, we get 250. And so using those inverse operations from solving equations and just like the, the rules I know from solving equations, I'm going to get 110 degrees. Now guys, if you look at a question like this and you can sort of do all that maths in your head, you are more than welcome to write X is equal to 110. So go straight to your answer just then remember to still write your reason. Just because you're writing just the answer doesn't mean that we need to miss out or that we can miss out the reason. So that is absolutely fine as your final answer. Absolutely. Okay, now um, I'm seeing some nice language going on in the chat here. Um, I've seen like adjacent and stuff like that. Adjacent angles is when angles are next to each other. So just in case you're seeing that in the chat and you're getting a bit confused, we are gonna chat about these in our le lessons coming up, but adjacent just means next to, all right. But guys, again, you're happy to go straight to an answer, especially for the slight easier questions, absolutely fine. Just remember to put your reason with that answer, okay. Naledi, do you have a question for us? Oh, um, ma'am, I just wanted to answer the next one. Okay, so let's see. Okay, so. Right, so here is question four. I'm going to give everyone a chance to do it, and then, Naledi, we will hear what you have to say. Question three, we've got our diagram here, and you've got three angles, so I'm wanting you to find the value of x. Okay, so what is the value of x? Not 2x, not anything, just x. 
And again, guys, pop your um, answers in the chat because we'd like to hear. But have a go of this one. Remember all your reasons. And again, if you're feeling comfortable, you're welcome to go straight to an answer if you need to. This one is a little bit harder, so you might need to set up your equation first before you jump straight to your answer. Um, but remember those reasons. That's really, really important. Guys, I got this. You can do this, my people. Do this. Let's go. Okay, and remember, if you have angles around the central point, so if we have a look here at this question, if I've got the central point over here, and if I add all of those angles up, I know that I should be getting 360 degrees. So that's a little clue for you if you are struggling a little bit with this question. And remember, guys, I want the value of x. So you have to basically solve for x. Okay, now, lady, do you want to tell us? Oh, uh, yes, ma'am. So I got my answer, ma'am. My first, I first added 2x and 2x, and it gave me 4x. So then I said 4x would equal minus 70 okay. and then i said four x oh no the reason the reason is angles around us um a point and then i said four x yes and then i said four x would equal 290 and then i divided both sides by four and my answer was x is 72.5 perfect right so i'll just run through that again but that is absolutely 100% well done. Right, so guys, what happens here is, as I sort of said as your clue, we've got three angles that if we add up, we have to get 360 degrees. Now, I'm going to just do a step before this first step here to show you how you could set it up before starting to solve. We know that 2x plus 2x plus 70 must give me 360. So if that was your first step, your reason of angles around a point would then go straight after that first step. So the second you make a statement, you have to give your reason. So generally that means it's gonna be your first step and then the reason immediately. From there, we saw that we had some like terms. So two X plus two X gave me the four X. And then because I want to solve for X, essentially we subtract 70, degrees on both sides so that my x is on the left and my constants are on the right so 360 minus 70 is 290 so i'm left with 4x is equal to 290 and then remember guys the goal is i want to solve for x so i need to divide both sides by 4 in order to get x alone and so i get that x is equal to 72 and a half degrees now guys what's really important is that if you go back to your diagram and you say, okay, well then what is the size? Let me take that off. What is the size of this angle 2x? Well, you know it's two times whatever the value of x is, which we've just worked out to be 72 and a half degrees. So the whole angle has a size of 145 degrees. But remember, I didn't ask for the angle, I asked for the value of x. So it's really important here that once we've worked out x, we can go and substitute it back to find what the size of the angle is. But the goal was to first find X and then go and do all of that other stuff. And so I think I might've seen somewhere on the chat or maybe I'm just imagining that if you say 145 divided by two, you do get your 72 and a half degrees. So just remember we are solving for X in this question. Okay, take your screenshot if you need. We're gonna try one more before we take a break. Right. Okay, this is a little bit harder because 
all of my angles have an X in it. So I'm going to start you off just by saying, remember that if we have a central point with angles around that point, if I add all of those angles up, I should get 360 degrees. So you guys are doing well. I'm going to let you have a think about this. Try this. But what I say to you is that if we've got a central point and we've got angles all the way around that point, if I add those angles up, I need to get 360 degrees. So think about how you can set up an equation for yourself to solve for x and remember that reason that you need to give in all of your, your step, well, for all statements that you make. Okay, if anyone is feeling brave, you're welcome to pop your hand up. But otherwise, pop your answers in the chat. I'd like to hear. I'd like to see if you have questions, please ask. As it does get a little bit harder, things can become a little bit more complicated. So it's really important that we're asking those questions. You guys are doing well, though. We can do this, guys. Okay, remember those reasons? And guys, remember if you are feeling like it is a little bit more complicated and you're needing to do more steps, rather do more steps. There's no point in trying to rush and jump to an answer Rather just do it step by step and make sure that you're comfortable and confident with everything you're writing down. Oh, Yolanda, I'm seeing lots of hands. Yep, yep. More questions, more questions. Guys, remember you can put your, your questions also on the chat. Okay. If you would like to answer the question, um, I'm assuming some of those hands up are to answer the question. Um, Linda, do you maybe want to pick the lucky contestant who will be answering for us? Oh, yes. Uh, let's go with Atleha. Oh, Atleha. I was going to go to you. Okay, Atleha is back. Atleha. Hi, Mom. Hi. How are you guys doing? All right. Good. Are you? good. I'm good. Um, so for this question, I said... <laughs> x plus 20 plus 10 plus 2x is equal to 360 because angles run a point. Then I um, separated the numbers saying uh, x plus 2x is equal to 360 minus 20 minus 10. Um, can you just say that last step again for me? I said x plus 2x is equal to 3x, oh sorry, um, is equal to 360 minus 20 minus 10. Okay, can I just, uh, uh, maybe I misheard you. When we add them all together, so we say x plus 20 plus yes. x minus 10 plus 2x. Yes. So you agree with my first step? Yes. Okay, cool. So... If we're adding the x's, I've got x plus x plus 2x. So sh should that be 4x? Oh, um, I added uh, x plus x plus x, which, is, which was equal to 360 minus 20 minus 10. Okay, so just be careful. It was minus 10. So our inverse means it's going to be plus 10. Okay. Um, then I said it was e equal to 4x. Then 360 minus 20 plus 10 was equal to 350. Good. And then I divided 4x by 350, which gave me uh, 87,5. Perfect. Okay, so we're going to divide 4x by 4 and 350 degrees by 4. And then exactly as you said, 87, whoopsie, 
comma five degrees. Perfect. Well done. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay, guys, I'm just going to run through it again, just so that we can all follow. So remember, if I add the three angles together, I should get 360 degrees. So x plus 20, let's just take this off. x plus 20 plus x minus 10 plus 2x needs to give me 360. So that was my very, very first statement over here, adding all of the angles together and saying that it needs to be equal to 360 degrees. Then I just collected my like terms. So I've got four X's and then I brought all the constants over to the right hand side. So that's why the signs changed because remember those inverse operations and we ended up with four X is equal to 350 degrees. We want X alone. So I would divide both sides by four and 350 divided by four is 87 and a half degrees. Now guys, again, remember, if you want to go and find the sizes of these angles, all you do is substitute in. So this would be two times 87 comma five degrees. And so the angle or rather the size of that angle would be 175. So this two X angle here is 175. If I wanted the size of my X plus 20 angle, I'm just substituting in 87 and a half plus 20. So that means the size of that angle there is 107 comma five degrees. And so if you just keep substituting in, you'll get the actual sizes of the angle. But for what we wanted to do, we wanted to solve for X. So just bear in mind to um, read the question carefully. And if you need to, you're always welcome to substitute back um, if you want to. Now guys, decimals are not, they're not common when we're looking for angles, but they can come up. Generally, they won't be like really ugly decimals. Like it won't be like 87,2582910. It won't be anything ugly like that. That's not to say it can't be, but generally it isn't. For the most part, um, if there are decimals, it'll be a nice decimal. But if it is an ugly decimal, as I've just seen you learn, just put on the chat, your teacher should tell you to round off to however many decimal places. So sometimes it might be two decimal places or however many, but decimals aren't necessarily bad. And remember, you can always check yourself as I've just shown you by substituting back in and making sure that like in a case like this, if you add them all together, you do get your 360 degrees. So always just double check what you've done. Um, like I say, we do try not use many decimals, but sometimes they can come up. So just be mindful of that. Okay, um, just quickly in terms of the order I wrote these angles here, it doesn't matter. You're adding them together. So whatever order you put them in is completely fine as long as you remember you're adding them all together. Okay, guys, so let's have a little break here. Here's our brain break for the day. Yay. And let me just read this joke for you while you're busy figuring out <laughs> why are circles so hot? Because they have 360 degrees. I found that so funny. <laughs> you know, like the hot, hot, is like somebody's hot, but it's actually hot because it's like three, three, six, <laughs> six hot. <laughs> so yeah, I appreciate it. Because he also likes the joke. Yay. <laughs> okay. I try, I try. Okay, guys, make sure you're stretching. Oh, get the blood flowing. Remember, if you are new, basically all a brain break is, is just a little break from the normal, or the normal, of from the maths we've been doing in the lesson. So this is a bit of a break from the geometry and the solving of the equations to find X. And this is a little bit of like a riddle brain teaser to try and figure out what the cat and the dog, no, there's no dogs there, what the cat, the pig, and the donkey represent so that you can go and try and find the value of that last expression over there. Okay, so have a think. If you can't do these or if you're just not feeling up to it, that's completely okay. It is just to give your brain a bit of a break. So do try it. But if you don't get it, it's also not the end of the world. But have a go. I see some answers already coming into the chat. Oh, where's Kendra? Where's our stretches? Kendra, we need you. <laughs> I can see him. I can see him. He's red. He is okay, red. I'm ready. <laughs> Oh, we're stretching the shoulders. Okay. Yeah. Oh, I need it.
Oh. Okay, just because I'm seeing some answers come through, just in case you are struggling a little bit, I'm going to start with the cats because the cats is a little bit easier. If you've got three cats being added together to give you 30, it means you're adding three of the same thing. So if I add 10, whoops, plus 10, plus 10, that should give me 30. So the cats are all equal to a value of 10. Okay. If we have a look at our pig, so what you need to be careful of is if we go to the second equation over here, whatever two pigs are added together, I still need to subtract 10 from that in order to get 22. So I need to think, okay, well, what do I need to start with so that when I take away 10, I have 22? So this sort of needs to take you back to solving equations. If I need to start with something and take 10 away to get 22, I could actually go and say, well, what is 22 plus 10? Because that will tell me what I started with before I took the 10 away. So the two pigs added together needs to give me a value of 32 because 32 minus 10 will give me the 22 that I want. Now, if it's two pigs, they need to be two of the same numbers. And so each pig is equal to 16. So now when we get to our next equation, we've got a pig minus a donkey. And if I need to get 11, well, then the donkey has to be five. And so in my final equation, if I've got a cat plus a pig plus a donkey, I've got 10 plus 16 plus, yeah, 10 plus 16 plus five, which gives me a total of 31. So well done, guys. I saw some 31s coming through. That's awesome. Well done. Okay, before we um, move on to the next few questions, can I just get a thumbs up, thumbs down of how you guys are feeling after those first five questions of geometry? Yay, we're okay, we're not okay. Okay, and guys, if you aren't feeling too confident or you're feeling a little bit iffy about it, please make sure you're asking questions or um, I don't know, like keep practicing. Um, remember you can send your questions directly to your lender or to me, that's absolutely fine. I will try and keep an eye on the chat as we go along, but just make sure that you are asking if you're not feeling 100% confident. Obviously we've just started the section, there's gonna be a lot more practice with it. So just bear in mind, there will be more practice. Um, but ask your questions. Okay, cool guys, you got this, you're doing well. So let's have a look at some more questions so we can do two at a time now. Right now, guys, so, while, while they're busy with this question, <laughs> I just wanted to remind them that guys, remember you need to give that reason. So the more you practice, I know it's annoying, but the more you try to solve this, because I believe every one of you is busy with this question here, right? Because Teacher Seb has been teaching us, guys. Let's show Teacher Seb that we understand. So do one, and when you're done, put your answers on the chat, or you can raise your hand. But I wanted to remind you, you're doing the question and putting the reason after putting the statement, because that's what Teacher Sam has taught us. Even if you know in your head, the more you practice writing it down is the more it gets stuck on your head, because uh, on Wednesday, I think Teacher Sam is going to add more things that it doesn't, it doesn't only uh, involve the angle around a point, but it's also adding something else. So best to write it all down, even if you know, because I believe you know. <laughs> it's really this. Okay, guys, that's actually really important. And I maybe actually should have said that at the start. So I apologize. There's lots of geometry reasons and we're going to learn a whole bunch of geometry reasons. And if you plan on taking math sort of into grade 10, 11 and 12, you're going to learn even more reasons. So it's really important that you are able to identify when to use certain reasons. Obviously, right now we've just looked at one and I'm going to make the statement because I can see it on the group here. I mean, on the chat here. 
you're going to learn a lot more. Now, some of you might have already done geometry and might have already learned some other reasons. And so you might have different reasons to what I'm going to put down. And that's absolutely fine. We'll chat about it when we do the answers. Um, but as Yolanda says, there's going to be lots of reasons. Oh, sorry. There's going to be lots of reasons that we look at. So it is important that you remember your reasons, you remember to write them down and like to know when to use certain reasons when we um, are working with questions. So mm. as we do more and more reasons, you're going to see that there's actually quite a few ways we can answer the same question. So for example, in question one, there's actually two different reasons you could potentially give for X and both are perfectly valid. Right now, we've only used angles around a point. But if you have done geometry and you know other reasons, there might be other reasons that you can use, which are absolutely fine. And I'll chat about it in a second. Um, I see, sorry, I see three okay. hands that was to answer. Did you say, like this, we give you a break. <laughs> three hands okay. that was to assist. I'm ready. <laughs> okay, Kailisha, your, your hand was first. We are all yours. You have to unmute on your side, Kailisha. Try again, Kailisha, on your side. There should be a little pop-up that pops in. There we go. You can talk. Hey, Kailisha, I'm gonna take someone else because we cannot hear you. So I think I think that we can just fix it and put your answer on the chat and we really appreciate you raising your hand to answer. Okay, but I cannot hear you. Okay. I think Alizua was also his hand was up next. Alizua, do you want to try and, 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 and give us an answer? Hello, ma'am. Hi. Hi. You can teach the class. <laughs> <laughs> oh, ma'am. X is equal to 135 because it's vertically opposite. Okay, so I'm just going to stop you there for a second. Um, this was one of the points I was making earlier where sometimes there's lots of reasons or multiple reasons to get the same answer. Now, we haven't yet spoken about vertically opposite angles and we will eventually talk about them. So if you have used it as a reason, I'm perfectly fine with that. If geometry is completely new to you and you're going to use angles around a point, I'm going to show you how to do that now. But as Elise was said, 135 and your reason as vertically opposite angles equal is absolutely fine right we are oh. going to do that reason so don't stress but that is absolutely valid ma'am thanks yes and you can even say angles on a straight line 180 oh, see, more reasons. yeah <laughs> 180 minus 45 equals to 135 Okay, perfect. So you can also use angles on a straight line. Again, we're going to do that reason. So if you have no clue what I'm talking about, don't stress, we're going to get there. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to show you how you would do it with angles around a point. But both of Elizabeth's reasons there are perfectly valid. So if you use them, well done, absolutely fine. If we use angles around a point, we know that all four of those angles, when I add them together, needs to give me 360. So I know that X plus 45 plus 45 plus 135 needs to give me 360 degrees because of angles round a point. Now guys, this is also like a good point to sort of say, sometimes when we do have multiple reasons that we can use, other reasons might be um, shorter, like the working out might be a bit shorter. And so that's also where once you start to learn more and more reasons, you can sort of start to say, okay, well, angles around a point is actually a very long calculation for me to do. So I'm not going to use that one. I'm going to use something else. So once we start to learn more and more reasons, there's many different ones that we can apply for certain questions, right? So if I just add all of those numbers up, I get X plus 225 equals 360. So now I need to use my inverse operations, which means I need to take 360 minus um, 225. And that gives me that answer of 135. So as you can see, exactly the same answer, but two different reasons. Both are perfectly valid. All right, so 
like I say, as we learn more and more reasons, you will see that there's certain situations where you'll favor one reason over another just because it's a little bit easier or you see that one first or whatever the case is. But if you are new completely to geometry, that is how we would do our angles around a point. Okay, thank you. Awesome, well done. Right, Yolinda, who's who's giving us question two? Me, ma'am. Yeah, oh, Nalini is like, okay, I want to go. Okay, Nalini. Okay. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> yes, ma uh, so, ma'am, oh, first I said uh, X plus, oh, I said first X plus 230 plus 60 would equal 360 degrees. And I think the, re the reason is angles around a point. Perfect. And then after that, ma'am, I said, and then after that, I said X would equal 360 minus 290, 290 because I added 230 and 60, and then mm -hmm. X would equal 70 degrees. Sure. Okay. I'm keeping up. I'm keeping up. It's equal to <laughs> 70 degrees. Well done, awesome. lady. I think you explained it beautifully. Well done. Awesome. Oh, lady, thank you very much. much. I'm so happy. Okay, guys, well done. So no lady was flip on a roll there. Well done. Okay, so just to run through it again, we know that if we add all three of these angles up, I need to get 360 because there's that common point there. And so we know it's a circle, so they all have to add up to 360. Again, guys, if this is something that you sort of can quickly do on a calculator, it's absolutely fine that you go answer and then you put your reason with your answer. That's cool. But the working out would be that we know that X plus 230 plus 60 must equal to 360 with your reason angles around a point. And then when you go and subtract the 230 and subtract the 60 from 360, you end up with 70 degrees as your value for X. Okay, can we get a thumbs up, thumbs down after those two questions? How are we feeling? Good. Okay, and again, guys, like with practice, these things will become easier. And honestly, once we start to do more reasons, it becomes a lot easier because then there's certain reasons that you can just be like, oh, no, I don't really enjoy that. I can use something else here. Okay, so as we start to do more and more of this and we start to get into more complex questions, all of these reasons will start to make sense. Awesome. And again, guys, if you're not feeling confident, if there's thumbs down or like half, half, you need to ask. Or just remember to keep practicing and keep um, trying and going back and watching these videos that have been recorded for you. Okay, nice guys. Right, so let's have a look at the next two over here. We've got, okay, now we've got a B that we want to solve for in question three. And in question four, we still have an X we want to solve, so solve for. So I'm going to ask you to do those two. I'll give you a few minutes. And then as Kendra said on the chat, there is a poll that we need to do. So let's do these two questions and then we can end off with our poll. All right, remember let's to ask see this map. Questions. You got it. You've got this, let's do it. Remember those reasons, really, really important. You don't want to lose mark because you lose a mark because you forgot to write down a reason. Okay. And like I say, guys, if you want, maybe keep like a little like piece of paper for yourself where you can just write down all of the reasons as we learn them so that you always have like an information sheet that you can refer back to, especially in the beginning stages of geometry. Eventually, you'll know these reasons off by heart and you won't need that. But maybe just to start with, just have like a little information sheet for all of your reasons um, so that if you're ever stuck, you can just go back and say, oh, okay, this is the reason I should be using here. That might be quite helpful for you. Okay, I'm already seeing some answers and some hands. The table is this to answer a question. Hi, ma'am. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can. Ma'am, I wanted to answer question one. 
Okay, cool. Let's go just so that we can have time for the poll. So tell me how you do the first one. Okay, so the first one I said B plus 94 plus 243 is equal to 360 degrees. Perfect. And what would your reason have to be there? Angles around a point. Awesome. Okay, keep then, going. Then it's B plus 357 equals to 360 degrees. Cool. Then, then it's B equals to 360 degrees minus 337 degrees. Good. Then it's B is equal to 23 degrees. 23, you said? Yes, ma'am. Perfect. Well done. Awesome. Right. So exactly as the table said to us, B is equal to 23 degrees. We set up our beautiful equation. B plus 94 plus 240 degrees equals 360. And we always give our reason, angles around a point. And then when we solve for B, we get that B is equal to 23 degrees. Well done, guys. That's awesome. Thank you, Latabo. Thank you. Cameron, give everyone a second or two to do question four, just in case you haven't gone to that point. And remember, answers in the chat, to raise your hand. You guys are doing so well tonight. You are on this geometry train. Well done. They are my awesome pebs. Naledi's ready. Okay, Naledi, I'm ready. Oh, but there's a poll also. Naledi, we already heard Naledi speaking to us. Naledi, can we spread the love and just go to Mpo? I haven't heard Mpo in a long time. Mpo, we are all yours. Naledi, you can put your answer on the chat. We really appreciate you. Yeah, Naledi, keep it up. Thank you. All right, Mpo, let's hear. Hello, ma'am. How are you? Hi, I'm good in you. I'm good, thank you. <laughs> so what I said was I added um 296 plus um 29. All right, and 296 plus 29 gives you 325, right? Okay. I'm just okay, adjust. and then pardon? No, no, keep going. I'm talking to myself. You can ignore me. <laughs> Continue. Okay, okay. And then I said 360 minus 325 equals 35. But but that answer is just the angle for um that area over there. But we're trying to find out what X is. <clears throat> so I said what number minus 24 gives you 35 and the answer is 59. And then yeah, sorry, sorry, yeah. And then like the the answer for the um whole equation is angles around a straight line. Okay. Um can you jump back a step? What was your value for x? It's 59. Yes, because I'm just losing my mind. That's okay. Sorry. Right, 59. X equals 59. Sure. Okay, so now just be careful. We're not working with angles on a straight line here because we're working with that 360. Sorry, I'm so sorry. I meant to say angles around the point, not angles on the straight line. Perfect. Yeah. Okay, awesome. Thank you. Right, so guys, what's quite interesting um, about the way Paul sort of worked through the solution is that, yes, it's important to set up an equation, but it is also important to think about how all of these angles sort of work together in order to create what it is we're looking for or to create that overall 360 degrees. So all of the thinking here we can put now into an algebraic equation for ourselves because we know that that x minus 24 degrees, let's just do a little thing there, plus 29 plus 296 must give me 360 degrees. And that statement is or has the reason, as we've said, angles around a point. Okay, so now we can start to solve for x. 
Now I want to subtract, or rather I want to add 24 to 360 and then subtract 29 and subtract 296 because that's going to allow me to solve for um, x. And unless my maths is just shocking at the moment, because it's shocking at the moment, I get the same thing, x is equal to 59 degrees. So the thinking is really important of, okay, well, if I've already got 296 and the 29, what am I left with? So if I've already got these two angles, what am I left with to create the rest of that 360, which is what Paul was thinking about? Well, I've only got 35 degrees left. So as you said, what number would I have to have to subtract 24 from to end up with that 35? But all of that can be put into our equation form. And it is important that we start to put our answers in these like algebraic equations and start to um, set up equations for ourselves, because you're going to see that's going to be quite useful to you later on. Um, but the thinking is 100%. And so we can put that all into an equation for ourselves that we can then go and solve. Right, guys, well done.